and we're live. Cool, cool, cool. All right, yes. I always panic at the start of these, which is funny because you'd think by now I'd be used to this, but nope. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Admiralty House live stream. Uh, my name is Tim. I am the assistant manager of Admiralty House. Uh, I mostly work on programming, social media, and other sorts of fun stuff. Yeah, Tyler, go ahead. And I'm Tyler. I'm the tech and education officer at Admiralty House. I mostly deal with tech and education <laughs> and facilitating uh, our streams and all that fun stuff. So, if you guys joined us a couple of weeks ago, you'll remember that we started on the building of the Battle Harbor Station that never was. And this week, we're... I think we're definitely going to finish it this week. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm i am fairly confident that, uh, that we'll finish this up. Are you in the realm? Yeah. I have not seen you yet. Hello. Oh, there you are. <laughs> All right, so uh, Tyler, I don't know if you want to get started by hauling up sort of the blueprint and a couple of the pictures of what we Oh, uh, Just to you... kind of re-familiarize everybody with it. Absolutely. I... I've just got to remember what order the images are in. Aha, so here's the blueprint. Okay. It's one thing I love. The blueprint is very simple. Yeah, it's it's very clear, um, very simple, easy to follow. Yeah, there's one thing I said it last time. There's a lot less conjecture this time. Yeah, yeah. When we were re uh, rebuilding the HM Wireless Station, uh, which was our last project for any new viewers, um, the blueprints were a lot more difficult to interpret and not nearly as uh, complete as this one seems to be. I can actually pull it up for comparison. Oh, right. Yeah, you still have that in there, don't you? Yep. So this is what we were building off of last time. And it, you know, it looks a lot busier and like there's a lot in it. But really, it's just the labelings of the rooms. We don't know what was in the rooms or where things were positioned in any of the rooms. Um, we don't even we we know like what all of the rooms were, uh, more or less. But it's nice to have a, a much simpler blueprint to work off of. Hmm. Um, I'm just like looking at like a super close up picture of the of the space and trying to figure out exactly what it's gonna look like. Right. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, you know, I actually don't know how if this is as clear as we thought it was. <laughs> Now that I'm looking at it. It never is, but oh well. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Because, you know, last week we mostly p were able to pay attention to structural bits and structural bits and bobs, but now it's getting down to it. See, I always find the structure is the easiest part because it's very clearly drawn out for you. Uh, but then it's actually, I find the hardest part is drawing out the stuff that obviously isn't in the picture right um we don't know a lot about what was in the building but i was going through some of emma's research notes and uh it was specifically listed where do i write this down now it was specifically listed that the only things in the building was the wireless equipment there was cookware there was a stove stove and there was a bed and i'm trying to figure out i'm like where would that bed have gone in here yeah, I know, because looking at the blueprints, 
there's the engine room, the battery room, the operating room, and then the hall. Would there have been a loft? Oh, but I don't see stairs. I don't see anywhere that stairs would have gone. I don't see where the stairs would have gone, and I also don't see a ladder either. Yeah. Although a loft isn't... There wouldn't have been a loft, because if you look at the blueprint photo again, the one with the floor plan... Let me pull it up for everybody else so they can <laughs> follow along with us. You'll notice in the top right photo, you'll notice that the loft space is filled with a water tank. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. I wonder that would have spanned the whole length of the see, uh, the roof, I'm not sure, but it definitely would have taken up a large portion of it. Right. Well, then that begs the question, would anyone have actually stayed here then? No, no one actually lived in the house. Like, there were residents. But well, there well, was... Right. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, no, you go ahead. <laughs> well, no, but I did notice in um, in the research notes that there was specifically listed that there was a bed in there. Right. But yeah, I am wondering that myself, like, where would it have been and, like... Hmm. Because, I mean, I guess it maybe could have gone in the operating room. It it must have because like you wouldn't put it in the engine room. No. Because that would have been really friggin' loud. Um. You wouldn't put it in the like. There's nowhere to put it in the front hall. Like the door swings the, almost the entire width of the room. Um. And then maybe the battery room, but I feel like the battery would have been quite sizable. Like, batteries in that era were not teeny tiny little things like now at triple A's. Right. Huh. Well, you know what? Let's just start building what we know was there and then see what it looks like after. Sounds good. I'm, I find in creative endeavors, I kind of just have to do it. Yeah, um, like finished is better than perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Never thought I'd hear you say that, Tim. Oh, I I only say it because now I sound virtuous and wise. <laughs> in reality, <laughs> I have never used that advice in my life. It's garbage. Don't listen to it. Um, <laughs> you know who says that? People who can't achieve perfection on the first attempt, like me. <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> You heard it here. Um, you heard it here, folks. Tim Tim's perfect at everything. Not everything, just everything I've ever tried. <laughs> <laughs> Your laughter is hurtful. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I would never laugh at you, Tim. Uh. Huh. So, so let's. I'm going to assume. That there was... Huh. I'm going to assume that there were rafters in here, like, sort of reminiscent of what in the HM Wireless. I feel like that's a safe assumption. Like, well, because, like, with the style of uh, roofing, like, there has to be something to support it, right? It doesn't just stand up by itself. Or does it? <laughs> I mean... No. <laughs> Do we remember how many uh, bricks wide the building is? Oh, jeez. We changed that number so many times. Yeah, I know. Here, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go do a, a count. We changed that number so many times. We had to keep the door. I know. That was rough. That was a rough day. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven? Mm-hmm. That's it? I thought it was, like, thirty-five. Yeah, well, it was, and then we had to move it. Oh, right. And then we kept shortening it. Yep. Cool. Twenty-seven. I'm counting. I can't do anything else. <laughs> Okay, so we need to build on 14. Five. 
six, seven, eight. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to find the center point, and then I remember the door is centered. <laughs> oh, I did math for nothing. All that work. God. Math for nothing! So, um, a little bit of history about the building if you weren't around last time or if you were around last time and just need a little quick refresher so this is the station that would have been built in battle harbor so battle harbor up in labrador there was a base built or there was a um wireless station built there in 1904 um it was done with a deal between the government of newfoundland and the canadian marconi company um and it was one of the first built in labrador uh, which is actually a really big deal because there weren't a lot of wireless stations in Labrador. And so Labrador and Newfoundland were, despite being very close to each other, very isolated from each other. Um, but what we're building right now is actually a proposed, um, a proposed upgrade in, I'm trying to remember the year, I want to say 1917. I am double checking my notes first because... I am very bad at years. Yes, so this is actually the upgraded plan. In 1917, they went to um, the Newfoundland government, basically saying, like, hey, we really need to update the technology. We could get it better, so much farther, so much more efficiently. And because of various political reasons, uh, they just decided not to go ahead with it. Um, so that's why we call this program the Marconi Station that never because we have the plans for it, they were ready to start building it, and it just got axed. So, we're building it now. I think that's about right for the rooms. Um, that looks pretty good. I think this. I think the challenge is the, the doors look like silly. Like they look very silly in terms of how narrow they are compared to the wall size. Yeah, I know. I'm. But I mean, that's just the limitation of Minecraft, you know. Do we know that it would have had? Cl well, yeah, because they're on the blueprints. There is obviously a, a swinging door. I was going to say, we could leave them as, like, open archways, but... Because it does look a little a little comical. Well, there would have been swinging doors, and I think, too, because of the fact that it was in coastal Labrador, and it was operational year-round, that um, they would have had to have had closing doors. Otherwise, oh. you probably would have closed, you know? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I didn't think about that. Oh, it is stormy out. And I kind of want to change the weather to fix it, but I also kind of like the fact that it's stormy. Uh, well, I, I like wish you'd said that <laughs> a well, little bit quicker. <laughs> darn it. <laughs> oh, well. It is what it is. I got it. Thanks, bud. <laughs> <laughs> the power of console commands. So let's see. Kind of. Is that like a like a small like hall table in the uh, hall part of the diagram? Do you think? Or like a chest maybe? I don't know. Um, in the hall. The. I feel like it might be the wood stove. Yep, that would make sense. I feel like that might be the stove. That um, would make sense. Do, do, do. Let's go back to my sheet full of random notes. So, a fun fact that I found out that we didn't talk about last time. Um... So we mentioned last time that uh, the people who ran the station were not really given that much. Like, if you worked the station, you had to bring up your food, 
and stuff like that. But you were given some like minor provisions, and for some reason, it specifically listed a fifty-pound bag of coal. Um, but one of the things I thought was really interesting was the fact that it was it was specifically in the notes that it was often the SS Kyle that actually shipped those provisions up to Labrador. Um, I know, like, I grew up in Newfoundland, so I remember so many times my dad giving me history of the Alphabet Fleet and the SS Kyle and all that jazz, but um, I don't know. I just thought it was a funny little coincidence. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, the SS Kyle was a sh steamship that back in, like, the early 19th, like, the first half of the 20th century used to carry provisions around mostly up to Labrador, um, but is actually still in the water today out in Harbor Grace. If you've ever been out in Harbor Grace, uh, there's this huge harbor, and if you look out in the middle of it, there's a boat just sitting there. Uh, and it's actually because in 1967, it was coming into Harbor Grace, and it just ran aground, and it's still sitting there. Just just sitting there, just doing its thing. That's interesting. It is really cool. It is one of my favorite, like, I go to see it, like, almost every year. <laughs> because I find that fascinating. That does sound really cool. It's kind of a little creepy because of the fact that it is basically a ghost ship just left there, but <laughs> I love that. Hmm. I'm trying to think of what we could use for the switchboard. I am the wrong person to ask that. I... Huh. What could you use for it? What could you use for the switchboard? The loom kind of looks... Like it might work. It's honestly really hard to tell. I'll just put it down and try. Is that a loom you have in front of you there now? Yeah. I love that. I think that looks great. Cool. Because I also thought it looked looked as as close as we're going to be able to get it without really intense mods. Um, let's see. Now we need the instrument table. Do we think that would have been a really thick table or something kind of uh, a little bit thinner? Or what do you think? I feel like it would have been a solid table. Okay. Like, so I'll use half slabs. Expensive. Yeah. Like, it's very expensive equipment. I don't think they would have slapped it down on, you know, like, TV dinner tray. Yeah, um, that's fair. But again, that's one of the things I've said it many times but i really struggle with with this project is i don't like conjecture <laughs> but i'm learning to get over it very quickly don't have much choice well because the other choice is not do it because we'll never actually know yeah uh oh Naturally, I chose a overcomplicated way to make the rafters, uh, because I like suffering, apparently. <laughs> I'm so bad at making um, aesthetically pleasing Minecraft builds. Especially, like, tables and chairs, but I I think this might actually work. Also, as much as I play this, you would think I would remember where everything is, but I never do. Well, like, honestly, I think the challenge comes, like, with ta making tables and chairs that look, is the fact that they're objects that we're very familiar with. Like, it's sort of, sort of like faces. Like, I've never seen a video game in which the face was not off-putting and creepy because they're, you know, something that we're very intimately familiar with. Yeah. And so they always kind of look strange. 
And I feel like it's the same thing with like tables and chairs. It's like, if it doesn't look exactly like a chair, you don't really see it. Yeah. That kind of works. Wait, I wonder if I do this instead. Also, I like that the rafters here are like just big enough that you can like fly through them. Oh, that's cute. I love that. It's like a throne. It's like a hardy. <laughs> cool. I like that. We do what we can. Oh, and the stove is the best. You, we need to extend that pipe up like through the roof, though. Yeah, I was uh, I was going to, but I figured I'd let you finish building your the rafters and all that. Nope, you're clear. I mean, feel free to tackle it if you want. I gotta try to Maybe figure out a telegraph key. I mean, like, I feel like the obvious choice is button, but I feel like that's gonna look silly. Like, just a singular button spinning on the table. Yeah. So what I'm gonna try, and it probably won't pay off, but we'll see. Oh, oh, that's you know. a nifty idea. I don't hate that. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. I love it. It looks great. So, something that I saw today that kind of was, like, a pleasant surprise was, as I was researching, I like to put together little notes of, like, oh, fun facts I can bring up, or cool things about what we're doing. Um, and I saw one of the Marconi wireless sets, right? I'm not sure what station it was for. I just saw it like it was a picture. Um, for any of you who've been to the museum before, you'll note it. Uh, you will have seen our, we call it the Marconi room, which is a to scale replica of the Marconi room on the SS Brazil. And we do have like, uh, we actually have like a full telegraph set up in there to, you know, show you what it would have looked like and it was just really surprising to see like oh wow it looks like dead on to what was in that station at the time yeah i mean shouldn't surprise me like we have genuine telegraph artifacts in there they're not just like replicas <laughs> but i don't know it's just really funny because it actually was like picture up to it and it was identical that's really cool um i'm trying to figure out what to use for the receiver Shoot, I didn't even think of it. We could have had a picture of the at the HM wireless station put up, uh, but I didn't take one. Yeah. Um, which is just another reason to come visit, so you can actually come and see like what the technology of the time would have looked like. Oh, absolutely. I think that's pretty close to the receiver that we've got. It's a little big, but I don't... Yeah, what are you going to do, right? Yeah. Building within the limitations of, of Minecraft. Yeah. Oh, and man. that is obviously not to say... The... Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was just going to say that uh, that's obviously not to uh, to say that I, I don't absolutely love and adore Minecraft. It has an aesthetic, right? Like, yeah. it has a very unique aesthetic. Oh no, that's not that's not the wall you used at all. I'm trying to um extend the uh the there. chimbley, as my <laughs> grandmother would call it. I don't know if that's a Newfoundland thing or if it's like a Saint John. Like her crowd always used to call it a chimbley. Oh, that's interesting. Instead of chimney. C H I M B L E Y, I guess how you would spell it. A chimbley. That's actually adorable. Hang I love that. Kings on the uh, so a cabinet transmitter. Hmm. A 
Any thoughts? Cabinet transmitter. Well, it would have been an actual cabinet, right? With a transmitter in it. So maybe you could make almost like a... You know, put up a couple of... Put up like... um, Oh, what are the solid doors that look like they're made out of... As the left and right side. And then a set of doors in the front with the windows. So you can actually open it. Yeah. Are you talking about the I, uh, spruce the spruce door? Um, spruce doors for the sides, and then like maybe oak doors for the front. Oh, or you could use dark oak doors for the sides. Those are also super class. Also, how how wide would this have been? Because it how looks pretty wide? big in the in the picture. Well, um, if you wanted to pull up the blueprint again, I keep asking to pull it up, but I just I want people at home to see what I'm looking at because I feel yeah, for sure. bad talking about. Oh well, I have the picture I can look at. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I've uh, I've got it pulled up off to the side too, but yeah. Um, if you notice that the window it or the size of the room was supposed to be about eight feet across. Right. So if you look at it, I guess about four feet based on that. Um, when in doubt. Tim pulls out his quilting square that is right <laughs> next to his desk and actually measures it. So mine is inches that way. And yep, about four feet. A little under four feet. Okay. So two blocks wide, I'd say, is spot on. Ah, oh, that feels so small in the room though, because Yeah, the room is not quite to proportion. No, probably. it's it's so difficult, like bringing the scale like it should be, like it's supposed to be. Yeah, and to be honest, I think that is something we can project is like sit down with the floor plan and really work out the scale beforehand. Yeah. Like, is it as fun and entertaining? No. But like, I think it could make these types of decisions easier when we already sort of idea of what it's going to look like. Yeah. I'm trying to decide what to make the uh, water tank out of. So there was a large water tank up in the ceiling. I'm assuming it would have caught rainwater somehow, but I can't really say with certain. Um, but I'm pretty sure it would have caught rainwater somehow. Um, and it was used for the engine primarily. I'm guessing uh, coolant and stuff like that. Um, I'm just trying to think what it would have been made out of. Like, aesthetically, I want to use glass so you can see into it and see the water, but... I really doubt it was made with plate glass. Right. Like, they couldn't get food shipped up to them. I doubt they were shipping plate glass. Yeah. Yeah, for fun sure. Fun random fact. I was going to say, fun random fact is one of the methods they used to use to ship... Um, to ship large pieces of glass or like large pieces of plate glass was actually that they'd see in vats of molasses. Um, you cut out for just a second there, Tim, if you want to repeat that. Oh, sorry. But no, I learned uh, a couple of years ago, I was doing a research project on the building of the Basilica in St. John's. And apparently a method that they used to use to ship large plate glass and like large pieces of glass was that they'd actually submerged the glass in vats of molasses while it was shipping. Because if you've ever tried pouring molasses, it does not move very quickly. That's interesting. You know? I thought that was fun. Yeah. Like, it sounds really messy and sticky and a nightmare to take out of the molasses. But, like, very creative and ingenuitive. Like. Oh, for sure. Let's see. Maybe I'll make this too deep. Yeah. Does using molasses for shipping count as recyclable packaging? I don't know about recyclable, but it's definitely eco-friendly. Repurposable. Like you could you weren't breaking the glass in it, so like you could eat the molasses away. I mean, I suppose. Which is recycling. (laughs) 
I don't know if I'd consider it recycling or reusing, but... Up upcycling, maybe? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting way too much thought into this. I like that. Huh. Although upcycling suggests the existence of an opposite downcycling. What would that be? Hmm. Throwing it in the garbage, I guess. <laughs> Just regularly like throwing out trash what I'm calling it now instead of throw it out it's like just downcycle it just downcycle it huh, I'm trying to think of something to put on the engine that's what I'm working on right now and I'm just trying to think of something that looks like buttons did you say that it looks like a button well, that looks like buttons. Like, have you considered? Oh, I, like I was about to say, have you considered buttons? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes the simplest answer is the hardest one to see. <laughs> sometimes the simplest answer is button. That is a behemoth. And so this was the engine, uh, right? I don't. I'm not sure how large it would have been. Um, considering the size of the space that it got, like, it, you know, the fact that it actually required a, like, a cement foundation poured underneath it, I think it would have been quite sizable. Right. I just realized right? I still had the graphic up. I am so sorry, uh, everyone. Oh no, how long was that up for? Uh, probably a good five minutes. <laughs> I am so sorry, everyone. <laughs> it's so easy to, um, to get distracted with talking through stuff and trying to keep the building and stuff going and engaging and then also keeping the graphics um functional and not <laughs> not taking up the whole screen for minutes at a time we also have to remember to put um we have to remember to put a uh gasoline tank on the outside yes we should do that I just realized we didn't do that. So the purpose of the engine, I'm assuming, um, I'm assuming would have been for like to produce electricity. You know, they would not have had wired electricity all the way up in the Labrador or at this point. So they had to actually produce their own electricity in order to running. Let me just, uh... I'm going around and putting some lights in. <laughs> Getting rid of the uh, very historically accurate torches. <laughs> yeah. We here at Admiralty House strive for the utmost uh, historically accurate Minecraft builds. Try not to have open flames in the wooden building with a huge gas tank strapped on the side of it, you know? I say as I'm setting up lanterns, even though they would have probably had electrical lighting. Well, that's, that's the challenge, you know? Like, Minecraft doesn't have electricity, so there is no electrical lighting, obviously. Um... Um, what I've seen most people use and what I will often use um, as electrical lighting, it doesn't really work because it looks very fluorescent, um, but uh, end rods produce a really nice, um, like, almost fluorescent light. Oh, right! I never would have thought of that. Hmm. Um, but it doesn't really work for uh, the, our... Our purposes here. What color would the engine have been? Like, is is gray acceptable? Do you I, think? I would assume gray. Like this station was built 
pre World Wars. Huh. And like, I don't know. Just meaning like it wouldn't have been like the classic military all of color. Well, for so wait, when was this? Probably. The station was proposed in 1917. Oh right, so yeah, it would have been thinking it, it would have been the first World War. But yeah, no, you're right. It was proposed during the First World War. My bad. I was thinking the original build date. Oh, gotcha. That makes sense. Whoa. Hmm. I think that's pretty well lit. Get out of here, torches. All I think of is uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. You have the right to remain well lit. <laughs> no. Oh, I love this cabinet. That's adorable. Thank you. It's not supposed to be adorable, it's supposed to be historically accurate. It's to hide the backs of the looms. <laughs> That's so clever. <laughs> we could have built like a fake wall. Like we could have just built a secondary depth of wall no. to hide it. Trapdoors. No. Must be trapdoors. Love it. Um, did you want to put some buttons and levers on the engine and I'll get the water tank built? I will do my best. Let's see. I'm guessing that the the water tank probably would have been built, I'm assuming, out of metal? I I would say that is a, a safe assumption. I feel like metal sounds right, just because what else? Were they made it out of glass? No. Was plastic prominent at this point? I, I don't think... believe so. I don't think that would have been uh, prevalent in everyday use, um, especially for like practical purposes until I think World War Two. Yeah, like I don't, I don't think so. See, this is why we need to get like a military, his or not a military, sorry, a material historian, because like that would be fantastic. I'm a great a material historian if we're talking about fabrics <laughs> anything else nope i am not very helpful hmm. see why can't we produce like outfits on minecraft then then i'd be i'd be here i mean you can make some some skin some uh skins for our uh, our avatars which i made this oh, one dear. um That'd this... be adorable. Can we do that for an upcoming stream? That'd be so much fun. I'd love that. Yeah, we could absolutely do that. Um, we could find like a skin editing software that we're. It's not a software. Gonna... There's a there's a website. It's it's oh, literally okay. minecraftskins.com, I think. Oh, that'd be so much fun. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, we could absolutely do that. That would be very fun. So exciting. Okay, well that that's happening. Add it on the list. Um, the scariest thing now is I need to add water to the tank. <laughs> I made a friend. Is there a llama inside? No. I I physically <laughs> made a friend. Did you draw a face on the engine? I don't know what you're talking about. I would never do such a thing. <laughs> wow. I don't know what to say. <laughs> you made friend sad. Stop. <laughs> Take that. Oh. But yeah, there definitely would have been at least a few buttons on it because you know obviously like you got to start it <laughs> yeah somehow i'm curious if it would have had an electrical starter or had a pull cord uh they had a battery on site so they wouldn't have needed you know and they would have had the electricity required for an automatic start but i feel like there probably would have been a pull cord on it just in case because like what happens if the battery dies Right. You know, it's a bit of a chicken or the egg situation. You need the engine to charge the battery, but you need the battery to start the engine. 
I don't know if there's something we could do to simulate a full court or if a lever is good enough for that purpose, you think? I got it. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. And it kind of makes it look like he has a tail. A little tiny tail. Oh, I deleted the face. It's gone. Oh. You killed your friend? <laughs> you were berating him with uh with snowballs. What what else? Berating. Barraging. You're berating his existence and you were barraging him with snowballs. There, is that better? Oh, I, I didn't see it, sorry. Oh, I wasn't talking I about that. I was just second. talking about me fixing my wording. Oh. Oh, no. What block were you yeah. using for this? Because I accidentally uh, punched it out. <laughs> um, The engine? Um... Ooh, oh, gray concrete maybe? That's what it looks like. Light gray concrete? Or light gray concrete powder maybe? Light gray concrete. I don't know. I, it, was, it was light gray concrete, I found it. Worst thing is, if you look at the bottom of the tank up top, like, you see it's dribbling water. Yeah, that's not great for the battery. Or engine. Well, this this is an engine. Um, I'm trying to think of how to fix that. Um, you could line the bottom with uh, iron trap doors. That sounds complicated. It's iron. really not. You underestimate how bad I am at Minecraft. I got it. No, I got it. It's too late, I've already done it. You're too slow! Oh. <laughs> I was filling it, like, literally, I, I was lining, like, the bottom of the- Oh, no, thing. I meant, like, the actual, like, the, the outside bottom. <laughs> oh, that works! I- I've been playing Minecraft. Okay, I bought- I bought Minecraft when I started- university back in 2012 and i've been playing it ever since i have played hundreds of hours of it and i did not know that you could stop the water tra putting trap doors on it <laughs> is it only iron or any trap door will do uh any trap door but the iron just looks better because you know it's a giant metal water tank if you don't have your own homemade trap doors, store bought will. <laughs> I'm trying to think what we're missing. Did you put the gasoline tank on the outside? Uh, not yet. We're missing the battery room. Um. <laughs> oh, the battery room, right? So really, yeah, it's just the it's just the battery room and the gas tank, fuel tank. Huh. I don't know, pe petrol tank. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, I find it fast, or I'm curious about it because on the blueprint it's listed as a um gasoline tank. So I'm curious because I know in current day Britain, like petrol is like the go-to term. Right. So I'm curious if like England. Like, maybe the blueprints were made by a Canadian or American company, or if maybe the use of petrol over gas is a pretty recent development for Britain. I don't know. I'm curious. Yeah, if, if anyone watching knows, uh, feel free to, to leave a chat, or if you're watching this after the fact when we upload it to YouTube, leave a comment and let us know, because we would love that. Also, feel free to uh, throw up any questions um, in comments or chats, whatever. Um, we would be more than happy to try to answer them or uh, do some research and find the answer for you. So, 
Um, battery. I am way too fascinated by batteries. I find the science of them very confusing. I watched a show recently where they made a battery out of a bunch of, like, yucca root and, like, the proper uh, the proper pieces of metal. I think they used, like, was it copper and zinc or something to conduct it? And they made, like, a bunch of yucca root into a giant battery. That's That's wild. Because, like, the basis of every battery is two particular types of metal and an acid, which apparently yucca root is. And I, like, I'm shook. <laughs> hmm. Now I just want to make batteries out of everything. Let's see. I'm trying to tackle this, uh, this gas tank. I'm curious how large the battery would have been. I know, like, batteries at the time were not dinky little things. Like, they had dinky little batteries um, for things like trench telephones. But, like, something like an operation this large, I feel like they would have needed significant. Like, would it have been, like, one of those full full room batteries? I don't know. Because it's, mm. it's like you said, this this was a pretty pretty sizable uh, operation. This was a... Well, I say sizable, but, like, it, it required a decent amount of electricity, I would imagine. And would the rooms have had ceiling? My first thought is yes, simply because of the fact that, like, all that heat pouring up yeah. into the rafters seems like a very inefficient use of a single stove. Right. Like, the house I grew up in had vaulted ceilings. Took, like... If you had to turn up the heat, it took forever for it to actually make because, you know, naturally the heat goes up and you heat the top of the ceiling first. So it only makes sense. How are you doing out here, bud? Trying what is to... this block? This block looks fascinating. It is polished deep slate. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, I've never heard tell of this. I feel like I just overcomplicated that a little bit, but I think it looks kind of nice. Oh yeah, no, it looks great. There was absolutely no need for me to use the iron trap doors. I could have just put blocks down if I was going to cover them in carpet. Eh, it is what it is. It is what it is. Say That is like the saying of the day. It really has been. How, I wish we had a counter for how many times we've said that today. <laughs> we can edit it and post. Stick it up on YouTube. Just like, how many times, as Tim said, it is what it is. Oh, I mean even outside of stream. Oh, oof. Yeah, I've said that a lot today. We both have. <laughs> um, it, it has most definitely well, been the saying of the day. It has been a crazy busy day in a great way because we are preparing for our event tomorrow, uh, Flashback Friday. Uh, so if you're in Mount Pearl tomorrow and you want to come out and hang out with us for a few hours and have a little bit of 80s nostalgia with us, um, pop out for it. It is entrance by donation. Um, I'm trying to think of other things to tell you about it. There's going to be 
80s trivia. There is going to be snacks. There is going to be video games. Um, I may or may not be judging your... Uh, we're breaking a couple of really cool... or Well, one particularly cool artifact. Your, uh, 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 your audio is cutting out really bad, Tim. Oh, darn it. How much did you miss then? <laughs> um... The last, like, cohesive thought was that there would be snacks. Um, we're breaking a really cool artifact out of the collections room, too, um, which is exciting. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is, because you're going to have to come and find out what it is. Um, I'm trying to think of other things. Uh, AMP, the Association for the Arts of Mount Pearl, is partnering with us, and we're going to be doing a puffy paint shirt workshop, which is exciting. I've never done puffy paint before. Um... Yeah, um, so yeah, feel free to come check that out. That's 4 to 9 p.m. tomorrow at Admiralty House, uh, specifically the Annex building next door to me. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. But yeah, so that's what we've been doing all day, is running around trying to get that put together. I blew way too many balloons and my face still... Um, <laughs> And for anyone who's watching this on YouTube, after the fact, uh, tomorrow being April 22nd, 2022, um, and this video will probably be going up that morning, so yeah, come check us out today if you're <laughs> watching on Friday, April 22nd. <laughs> so what kind of doors should we put in these? Because I think that's it. Yeah, I, doorways. I think we're just about done. Do you want to use maybe spruce doors? Feel like they'd be more fitting? Maybe. Is that it? Are we done? Um, we didn't I'm... put the bed in. They specifically said that there was a bed in here somewhere. Yeah, I just don't know where to put it. Um, I feel like... I don't know where you are right now. I'm fixing the ceiling in the uh, engine room. What's wrong with it? Oh, I was closing up the... I took down the trapdoors and put um, like the rest of the ceiling bit. Okay, yes. It's not leaking, so we're good. I was thinking the bed would probably have been in the operating room. Yeah, that's that's what makes the most and, sense. And hear me out, because like the engine room is out because like that's way too loud. Yeah. Um I feel like the hall is out because there's not a lot of space in it. I feel like the battery room is out because like I feel like you should not sleep around batteries. That sounds really questionable to me. Um but also, too, I think if you were here, like, only one person ever worked in here at a time, right? Like, the men who worked here worked eight-hour shifts, um, and I feel like you'd want to be close to the equipment. Like, if a message suddenly came in, like, you'd respond, right? Yep. I think that's so reasonable, I yeah. Feel like, yeah, you'd need to be pretty close to the equipment. Are we done? Um, just about. I'm putting some finishing touches on the battery. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I did not do <laughs> very good on that. But I tried really hard. No, it's good. It is huge. I don't know. I doubt it would have been actually that large in reality. But, like, it was big enough that it got its own room. Yeah. You know, like, it got its own... How big is the measurement according to the picture? It's a six foot square room. Like, that's bigger than the bedroom I had growing up. <laughs> oh, I missed that room. That was fun. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Six foot one teenage Tim living in a six foot square. Jeez. <laughs> Not perfect, but it'll it'll do. Oh wait. <laughs> I 
I love him. Did you put another face on I don't there? know what you're talking about. I would never. I am a professional. <laughs> so, should we give him? <laughs> the, the audible dude. Uh, should we give, like, a grand tour of the place, I guess? I guess, yeah. So I guess we start with the gasoline tank outside and then more Croy in? Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds, sounds like that works. Cool. So yeah, while Teller does that, I will give you sort of the repeat spiel of it. So, like I said, it was built in 1904. Um... Excuse me, dropping things. It was, um, when? it was defined. At one point, someone called it the key to the whole coast because it was one of the most important uh, wireless stations in Labrador. It was actually one of the only, if I believe the only uh, wireless station in Labrador that could communicate directly with Newfoundland, but it could only directly communicate with Newfoundland if it had like the right weather conditions, which wasn't very often. So um it used to have to communicate with Belle Isle and there was a lot of drama there because Belle Isle station was by Canada. Um Oh, ouch. Oof. <laughs> oh. Um but yes, so it was very pivotal in the communication between Labrador and Newfoundland. Um and yeah, so the station actually stayed in function until Oof, it was a lot later than I thought it was. Uh, the station itself closed in 1960, um, and the station didn't get decommissioned until... It's pretty recent, honestly. Yeah. Oh, what's this? There's a sign. Oh, you're labeling the rooms! That's a great idea! I like want to put something in the furnace to like burn. Um, you put some iron ore in there. That's what I did earlier. You need. Uh... Sorry, raw iron, not iron ore. Love it. I'm trying. I'm trying <laughs> to figure out how to pick up a stack. I'm literally like I'm picking up um, one piece of shift click. <laughs> well, wouldn't it? Ugh. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting here repeatedly clicking <laughs> like a fool. Oh, I know what would uh. What would help with this? I love that little plant that you put. How did you do that? Do what? The putting the outline around the lettering. Glow ink. I am learning every day, folks. Wow. Will it glow in the dark now? That's Fabulous. <gasps> okay, you need to stop this, you freaky wizard. <laughs> also, I just realized the time, so we gotta get going. Like, let's. Oh what's yeah. Left? I like the blue. Um, let's see. God, I don't know where I'm gonna put the sign for the <laughs> battery room. Yeah, I'm sorry. I probably should have made it a little. Nah, it's fine. I just got a little overzealous because of my strange affection for batteries. <laughs> oh, I like this. <laughs> oh, you missed that. Oh, too bad. That was fun. I did a silly thing. <laughs> um, cool. And the engine room. Yeah. I love this. 
I love that we put so much work into like that um, tank in the ceiling and then we covered it up. <laughs> Never to be seen again. Well, you put so much work into it. I didn't. <laughs> I mean, we could open up that part of the ceiling if you wanted. No, it's okay. Oh, wait. I know what we need to do. What? I don't know why I closed the door on you. I'm sorry. You do it every time. <laughs> Most of the time it's on purpose. That time it was an afterthought. What is it? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, I love that. Someone's got to work it. Did you just give him a mailbag? Oh. Oh, I think... <laughs> I think he's, um... He's a cartographer. Because you put the charting things in here. Yep. Um, on oh, my that's... on my screen, he looks very messed up. I think he's kind of, um... Oh my... <laughs> I think what? something's interfering with some of the mods that I use on my personal, uh... My personal Minecraft. What happened to him? Um, so I have a mod that turns all villagers into cute little fox people. Um, which I love very much. And this uh, seems to be some sort of unholy am amalgamation of that. <laughs> what happened to him? Um, we're just... Uh... <laughs> yeah, okay, so we're done. Um, <laughs> we're done, we're done. We're done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for every to everyone at home. Divert your eyes. Go <laughs> home. I'm sorry this happened to you. That's so weird. Yeah, no, they all it does that to all of them. That's unfortunate. Oh God, there's more. <laughs> Why are you making so many of them? Well, I wanted to see if it was just a one one time thing or if it was you all of, so them. Many of them. It's the house is full now. It's all of them. They're all gonna turn into cartographers. It's it's fine. They can have a, a they can have a party to celebrate our completed project. Yeah, we did it. This is another build down. That's two. So yeah, folks at home, this is about all we had for this week. Um, stay tuned. I'm not quite sure exactly what the next day is gonna be, just because we have a couple of at the museum but stay tuned keep an ear out on our social media platform and we'll tell you when the next build is and what the next build is if you have any ideas requests thoughts comments concerns queries cries of anguish weeping and gnashing <laughs> whatever it is let us know uh you can contact us through facebook twitter instagram our youtube channel our twitch account and through the website as well um, if you have ideas on what we should build next, let us know. Otherwise, stay tuned for more. Yep. Anything else, Paul? Um, all of, I mean, just, you know, all of the links to our social media can be found on our Twitch page. Um, or you could probably just find it by searching Admiralty House Communications Museum. Um, and yeah, that, that about covers it. All right, well... Thanks for coming out, folks, and we'll see you next time. Uh, come visit us tomorrow, or today, if you're on the YouTubes. Or you missed us. Never, if, you're... if you've watched the weeks from now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, bye, everyone. Make your choices.